Well, hey there, everybody. It is 5 p.m. on the West Coast and 8 p.m. on the East Coast. And after a long hiatus of several weeks, uh, we are here once again in the Learning Wing at Online Techniques. And I'd like to welcome everybody here. And so we're talking tonight about content curation. Uh, in the text chat, um, give me a yes or a no if you have ever heard the term content curation before. Just give me a quick yes or a no. Well, it is a fairly new term. It's being used a lot now because there's a whole bunch of talk about it and there's a reason there's a whole bunch of talk about it. Um, okay, and Cal says yes or no. So, um, what we've got here is something where people are starting to hear about it um, but you're, you know, most people are not really filled in yet on what it is if it could apply to them, how come this thing just popped out of nowhere? Boop, you know, uh, you, you work in SEO for years and years, you work on your blogs, you do all this stuff, and you're constantly bombarded with, you know, like by guys like me with stuff about keyword density and uh, all, all that kind of stuff. And not once do you hear this term until about two months ago. Three months ago. So what we're going to do is we're going to have, we've got three things on our agenda for tonight. Number one, what is curation? We're going to clear that all up. And then why is it the new big thing? Okay, why all of a sudden uh, is everybody talking about this? Why, uh, you know, didn't we talk about this a year ago? How come, boop, all of a sudden everybody's saying curation, curation, this new word, all right? And the third thing we're going to talk about is the things you have to consider um, when you're making a decision as to whether or not this can work for you. Now, I tend to believe that in certain ways, what I'm going to be showing you can work for anybody. It can be a valuable adjunct to whatever you are doing. Now, maybe you don't have, uh, you know, with the particular thing you do, maybe you don't end up having a website that is a quote-unquote curation website. Maybe you don't do that. But the tools I'm going to show you can be used for a lot of other things too. For instance, if you make niche blogs and you have five, six, seven, eight, nine niche blogs, and you might want to keep track of you know you keep, you want to keep them at the top of the the search term uh, results in Google and Bing and Yahoo. So, what do you do every once in a while? You put new content on it. All right, this might be an easy way to do that. And you'll see why as we get into this. But these are the three things we're going to cover tonight. What is curation? Why is it the big new brouhaha thing all around? And can it work for me? So, number one. What is curation? It's really easy when you think about it. Uh, think of, where does the word come from? Think of the curator in a museum. All right. Uh, the curator does what? The curator... Um, admits, uh, cares for, and shares the exhibits in a museum, okay? Uh, now, when you're talking about content curation, you're not talking about content that you created yourself. You're talking about content that you've gathered into one place on the web. Um, how many of you have had this problem? Let's say, okay, you create your own blog. I got, you know, stevegehagen.com. I've got onlinetechniques.com. Well, I've also got goodonlinebusinessideas.com. I've got, you know, this uh, um, uh, business ideas that uh, online businesses that work.com. I've got bestinternetmlm.net. Uh, I've got, I could go on and on. Um, telomererepair.net. Uh, niche blogs all over the place, and all of them need content of one sort or another. How many of you have run into the thing where, you know, you've got a website to make, or you've got something that you're, you're trying to put together, and you're just, oh, man, I don't know if I can create all of this content. I didn't, you know, if I'd wanted to be a writer, I would have started writing a novel. I wanted to work online. Now, all of a sudden, I'm writing all this stuff all the time. All I'm doing is writing and writing and writing. Has anybody ever had that feeling of, oh, my God, I can't write another word? <laughs> Karen, Karen has an unequivocal yes there. <laughs> okay. Cal says all the time. Yep. 
Okay. Well, there are ways now to create websites that not only do you not have to create the content yourself, but they pull great traffic while you do it. I'm going to show you some numbers tonight that are going to just blow your socks off. Content creation is where you create a website that is an amalgamation, a collection of all of the best information on one subject gathered together in one place. Now, can you see how Google would like that? All right. Give me a yes, then, or if you can see right off the bat, how Google would like that. If uh, if somebody has a, a text chat, uh, you know, a, a search term, and they put it in, and you know, in the first five results, one of those websites has basically all the other websites on the first page, and everything else on the first three pages all combined into one place for their searcher to use. Yes. Okay, all of these search engines, keep it in mind, all of these search engines have one thing in common. The way they judge things is by the experience of their user. When they find, when a user finds something through a search, uses a search engine, the search engine wants them to find the best information in the least amount of locations. They don't want them to have to search all over the first three pages of their results to get everything. Okay? And that used to be pretty much how it was. And it was there it was that way because of a lot of reasons. But keep this in mind. The search engines love this kind of thing. So a curated website is one where you throw your keyboard out, basically, and you put your search, searching magnifying glass on uh, and start searching for content that you can put in one place to have all the best content about one subject available through one porthole. Okay? Uh, yeah, that's why they love Wikipedia. Now look at this. Guys, how many of you, give me a yes to text chat if you recognize this web page. Just give me a yes in text chat. This is one of the most highly ranked websites in the world. Somebody who's just watching this right now, go to Alexa, put in drudgereport.com and see, you know, where it's ranked in the world. It's going to be in the top, in the top 50,000 websites, I'll guarantee you. All right. And I want you to look at something. I'm going to point it out in just a second. But here is one of the things that is different now than it was a year ago. This is one of the reasons, okay, it's number 465. Listen, if you're in the top 100,000, you're doing pretty good, all right? It's number 465. You see all these lines on this page? Those are all links to other websites. There is not one iota of original content on the Drudge Report, never has been. There is no original content. The website is run by Matt Drudge and his assistant. Two people run the entire website. And there is no new content at all. They don't even moderate these things. They don't editorialize on them. They do nothing. These are all links to other sites. How do you do that? How do you get ranked number 465 on Earth? with a website that has no original content. Don't they get dinged for duplicate content? Haven't you heard this? Watch out, you'll get dinged for duplicate content. you got to have your own original stuff up there, or Google won't like you. Hell, they're number 465 in the world. I, 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 you know, I'd take that. What do you think somebody would pay them for this website right now? It, ha it is ranked number 465 in the world. What do you think someone would pay them to buy this website right now? These two guys working in Matt Drudge's penthouse. Just something to think about. How about this site? We know what somebody paid Ariana for this one. Somebody look this one up on Alexa. Robert, if you got a second. The Huffington Post. 
They paid her after uh, having this, this, this site up for four years. They paid Ariana $400 million. AOL paid her $400 million for this website. They gave her, what was it, $40 million up front? Okay, it's number 88 in the world. <laughs> it's number 88. Now, when the Huffington Post started out, it was exactly like the Drudge Report. There was no original content at all. <clears throat> now, Ariana is more outgoing than Matt Drudge, and Ariana worked it, you know. And um, she went out to a lot of people like E.J. Dion and um, liberal commentators and things like that. And uh, she said, hey, we're getting a really highly ranked website here. How would you like to, um, you know, be on it? Give us a column. You know, give us an article. We'll publish it. We're getting, you know, 150,000 visitors every, <laughs> you know, every week. Uh, and your name and your byline and your link to your own web page will be on it. She didn't have to pay for this content. By the time she started doing it and putting the original the Huffington Post original stuff on there with the curated content, they were dying to give her stuff to please put it on your website. Please, please. And nobody gets paid now, although the Huffington Post has a good amount of original content, nobody there gets paid, even though it's owned by AOL. They do it for the exposure, because guess what? The Huffington Post gets a billion visitors a month. A billion visitors a month to the website. <laughs> it's um, like we're talking incredible traffic. And this web page is a combination of original material that you won't find other places and a whole lot of curated stuff from somewhere else. That's it. Okay. Now, remember, wasn't this the the general wisdom, you can't do that? You can't do that kind of stuff. Well, you know, you got to have all original content. Uh, you'll get dinged for duplicate content. You'll get dinged for, for copyright violations and infringements and things like that. Okay? I'm here to tell you that's not the case. You do not have to write any uh, everything on your website. In fact, if you do it right, you can write about one-tenth of the content on there and be absolutely fine to get more traffic than people who are struggling to write their own. Now here's an example of another one. There we go. This is the Costa Real Estate Digest. My good friend Brian Costa is a commercial real estate broker in downtown LA. And uh, this is what we can call an experiment, but this is the website that I curate for him. And we have, uh, this is a, it's a, a, a woo theme, it's a magazine theme, and every day I put uh, a couple of news items that have to do with commercial real estate, with real estate, things like that, um, and you know, it's just treated as a magazine. Uh, the stuff that changes and the posts are all on the front page, and then it's got, you can see different pages there, blurbs about his different services and the things that he does, and he's a, he's a pretty high-powered commercial real estate guy so you know he's got a nice niche that lends itself to news and uh, this is one of those things that I'm doing um, for a client but we decided to go into this way of doing it as opposed to more of a narrow niche uh, and just do curation for a while and see how things built and I'm going to show you how things built in a little while. But that's an example of another curated website. Because you can have all your other stuff out here you want. And he can do his own blog posts, you know. What, he's going to start doing an editorial a week and an analysis column every week. Uh, at this point, we've got about, oh, I would say 50 or 60 um, curated articles from other sources. And uh, starting next Sunday, he's going to have his Sunday editorial, and then we're going to do the Thursday market analysis, and his own things will start appearing in here, too. Um, but basically, at this point, the content is either copy that I have written for his pages or curated content from other sites, and it's doing extremely well. 
So these are just examples of you know what a curated site is. It's it's, it's where you you get your rid of the burden of having to create a hundred percent of everything yourself, and you search for relevant content from all over the place, online, offline, wherever you want to search, uh, and then you organize it into categories, into subjects, whatever, uh, that fit on your one portal website, basically, is what it is, and then you share all of that information in one spot. Uh, <clears throat> the Library of Congress is, <laughs> is you know, a nice uh, curation site basically is what it is and in effect you become the searcher your readers don't have to search everywhere for everything if you've got a liberal uh, leaning political bent you can go to the Huffington Post and you know you're gonna find what you want to find there from everywhere that creates that kind of stuff all over the world if you got the, the conservative conspiracy theorist thing going and you're political bent, you can go to the drug, the Drudge Report and you'll find everything from all those kind of sources right there. So you become the searcher. And by, in doing that, you become an invaluable resource to your readers and two things happen. They share the information about their site, uh, your site with like-minded friends through social media and personal contact and they come back they don't just visit your site once they come back again and again and again uh, curation is really really sticky once you get somebody come I've noticed it in the stats in Brian's back office uh, once you get somebody there once if they have an interest in the subject they come back in a couple days again you can see it happening in the in the IP addresses logged in the stat press records all the time so that's what it is it's a it's it's gathering content the best content on a specific subject from all over the place and bringing it all together under one roof which gets rid of the creation problem for you so that's what curation is all about and Google absolutely loves this and because because it's giving them what they want right it's giving them, uh, it's, uh, what, what's happening is you're getting better quality search results uh, at the top of the search engine rankings. And people are returning to websites, and when they see that happening, Google likes it, and they, they move you up in the rankings. Um, I have done some curated stuff where my curation has actually, for Brian's website, has actually appeared about five slots higher than the Los Angeles Times article that we curated. Literally. Here's the Los Angeles Times article that we took at the bottom of the page, and we're like four splices up. <laughs> you know, that's how much they like this kind of thing. So, if you look at SEO techniques up until the beginning of this year, Things like keyword density, things like you know all all of the, all of this kind of stuff. Um, the, this is the very stuff that I've been teaching for a long time. What is it? It is gaming the system. It is learning the system so that you can manipulate the system into putting your web page at the top of the search. It has nothing to do with getting better quality information on my website. It has to do with how I put that website together so that I can trick the Google machine into thinking mine's more relevant than somebody else's and therefore putting it on top. Now what's happened is Penguin and, uh, and, and, and Panda, they've created this situation where we can actually work with Google. We can sit down on the same side of the table and instead of being adversaries where we're trying to manipulate and be sneaky and manipulate their little thing into putting us where we want to put it we can actually work with them to create websites that deliver the best content to the searcher and that will get us our ranking that's what they've done with the algorithm and that's why this works now where it didn't work before because before you had to be conscious of all this other stuff uh, and we were working at cross purposes. But now, 
They've made it so that if we put ourselves down on the same side of the table and work for the same thing, when we create a website, the same thing that Google wants, that Bing wants, that Yahoo wants, if we work towards the same goal, they will rank us at the top. This is the stat press readout from the Costa Real Estate Digest from Brian's website. This is back to July 11, so this is 30 days worth of stuff. And um, it doesn't look very impressive, but I want to show you something. Last month was July. He had 616 visitors in that month. Now, I can tell you that the month before was only like 200 and something. We've been working on this website since like February. The grand total is 1,092, but 616 of them came last month. Now, look at this. This is July 19th. We didn't start curating articles till July 16th. This is the day right here where we began curation. Now, when I say we curate an article, we take that article, from, we find an article, and we put it on the website. Um, now, we do, we do not copy and paste it and actually put it on the website. We link to it. This is why people don't mind. You have to check the websites. Um, some websites, you know, if it's an Associated Press article, for instance, they will hunt you down and kill you because they want everybody, they're in the business of selling their articles to news outlets. So if you curate something that's been sold to somebody from the, from the AP, they're going to come after you. Uh, but... You know, if you go to, if, if you got a Los Angeles Times article, a New York Times article, um, anything from any newspaper like that, and you're not taking it out of the website, but you are actually directing people to their website from yours through a link saying, here, read it here, click, and you, you know, you always use a blank link so it opens in a new window, but, um, and you use a no-follow link, so you're not sending them your spiders. But if you do that, those outlets are not going to mind. They're going to like you sending traffic to their website. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> what happens in the meantime is that uh, people are looking, like for in Brian's case, for real estate information, commercial real estate market information, are going to find uh, the, are all the articles relevant in the LA Times, in the um, Chicago Sun, in the New York Times, in the you know uh, the Sacramento Bee, in the Orange County Register, in the Miami this, in the Texas Austin that, and they're going to find it all in one place. They're going to keep going back to Brandon uh, to Brian's site. Right? Does this make sense to you guys? Now, let me show you what happened. We started curating here. Right here. Boom! Look what happened on the fourth day. I'm going to put my cursor there and hopefully it'll read it for you. 217 visitors to his website in one day. Next day, 161 visitors. Next day, 170 visitors. Then, uh, 41 visitors. I don't know what happened. It's a Friday or a Saturday or something like that. Um, yeah, it's the end of the week. Okay. Next day, 173. 126. 82. Okay, this one's 129. Here was a week where there was no news. The, the, during this time, we got a lot of um, financial reporting and everything, and then it just dry, died off. Okay? It just sort of died off. But still, if I can get in here and make it... Okay, still... 29 visitors. Hello. 51 page views, 28 visitors. 21 visitors. 45 page views, 26 visitors. Then we got a few more things coming. 118 visitors. Today we've had 118 visitors so far. Today. Okay. Guys, is this good traffic to a website? Would you consider this good traffic if you had these guys coming to your website? I <laughs> I would, okay? This is more traffic than I get to my website. I mean, a 217 visitors in a day is something that I have not seen. All right? And, you know, you can go down here and you can see that they're coming through different search terms. Um, real estate mediators. Joseph Lissing from Marcus Millichap. Here's somebody 
who is searching for this particular commercial real estate broker, not Brian, he ends up on Brian's page. Okay, here's somebody searching for Brian. Here's somebody searching for Starwood Capital. It's a big, uh, you know, a big uh, commercial investment uh, real estate firm. Ventura Real Estate Market Conditions, July 2012. They end up on Brian's website. Okay, and when they do that, they see all of his stuff about he can help you with financial uh, stuff, he can help you with commercial real estate, he can help you with uh, looking for a home, he can help you with development and uh, entitlement. Um, situations and all this other stuff and these guys are all coming from there all right it t tells me you know what page they've been to and all this um, kind of stuff but this is what happens from this kind of thing if you do it right three days of curating about three or four things every day there and boom traffic just went through the roof and it's been consistent really ever since um, 118 118 See, it's the little black mark at the top that really matters. All right. So uh, that's pretty impressive to me, and that's I wanted. That's why I wanted to show you that. The third thing we got to cover very quickly is: Can this kind of thing work for me? All right. <clears throat> now you got to think about several things. Number one: Do you have a niche that has some news in it? Uh, now. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have stuff from the New York Times, but is there enough stuff for you to curate? Uh, and from quality sources. Uh, you don't want to be, you know, if you're uh, blogging on, you know, some subject that means a lot to you, but uh, only has 14 people, uh, you know, interested in it in the rest of the United States, you don't want to be uh, curating from those 14 other people's blogs, <laughs> right? You want to have something uh, that's going on that, that's going to generate some news. Real estate, for, for instance, is a good one. Uh, you can run into problems with what Google considers to be questionable real estate. I'll tell you right now, a lot of us are in network marketing companies. Uh, this is not quite as easy when you go into creating a site, say, in the weight reduction niche, because Google doesn't like the niche. And Google doesn't like the niche because there's so many hucksters in it. There's so many fakes and frauds and everything else. And people have been, you know, and 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 uh, I, I, you know, the, I'm I'm involved in a network marketing company that has great weight loss products, uh, and uh, you know, uh, that's not the point. The point is there are so many people in that niche who are full of crap um, that Google doesn't like it. And um, there's a lot of niches like that. The work-at-home niche is one of them. And um, so, you know, if you're going to do something in a niche like that, it's going to take you more time. Uh, it's not going to happen in three days like that. But it will happen, you know. Um, you, can, you can still do this. When, if you do that, if you do that, you know, with the weight loss or the work-at-home or... Uh, make money online or one of those kind of things you need to make sure that you're only uh, curating very high quality stuff you'll find out there's a lot of blogs out there and you don't want to curate from them okay you don't want to curate press releases and things like that you want to qu uh, curate good quality articles you can qual uh, you can curate easy articles you can curate from there okay you can't do it all the time you got a. You can, you know, uh, if you've got a very, very, very active site, you can do maybe three a month uh, onto your website. Um, but uh, you you do more than that, and easy articles won't like it anymore. So there's a few things to consider. Um, you know, are you in danger of Google's du duplicate content? Not if you do it the right way. You don't take the content and put it on your website. You link to it. If you take a photograph from the article and you put it on your website as part of your curation, you have the credits under it. And you make sure that you can use it. That what You make sure that you can do that. Because in some cases, you can't. All right? 
uh, you need to make sure that you've got uh, the the correct license information, and you know you put the correct credit for the for the photo and things like that. So there are some things that you need to learn and and uh, how to do. Um, where do you find things to curate? You can find things all over the place, um, online, offline, anywhere you want to, where people will allow you to do it. Now. The big question then becomes number five, which is what Don was alluding to there. Can you do this quickly and easily? Yes. The answer is yes. This can get very complicated. You can do it wrong. Uh, you can put the wrong stuff up there. You, can, you know, And you can spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours trying to find out, uh, you know, something somewhere to, to, to curate and how to put it up correctly and things like that. But there are ways to do this easily and simply. So uh, that's it for now. You guys know where to find me. If you want to find me, you can always Skype me, phone me, email me, or uh, just you know call your local police station. They usually know where I am. I have to report in. So <laughs> other than that, uh, have a great week. And uh, I will see you online. Thanks for all. Thanks for coming. And uh, have a good night. Bye now.